One of the most challenging problems for new chemists in chemistry too is the determination of whether a salt that's dissolved in water will result in an acidic solution, a basic solution, or a neutral solution. So let's examine some ideas that will help you in making that determination. The first thing we want to remember is that the conjugate base of a weak acid is a weak base. So in this particular case, sodium bicarbonate is our salt. We're going to put it in water as we do all salts when we're trying to make this determination. These are all soluble strong electrolytes. It's going to completely dissociate into a sodium cation and a bicarbonate anion. So we look at the sodium cation. Now, if you're looking for an acid, you're looking at the cation. You're looking at the positively charged species. If the positively charged cation doesn't have a hydrogen ion to donate, chances are it's not going to be a weak acid. The only other exception to that is if it were a Lewis acid, an electron acceptor, and it was able to acidify the solution that way. Sodium cation is the conjugate of a strong base, so we know that it's a neutral acid. It's not going to make the solution acidic. On the other hand, if we look at the bicarbonate anion and we were to imagine taking H plus just as an exercise to examine whether or not its conjugate acid is a weak acid, if we added H plus to HCO3 minus the bicarbonate anion, that would give us H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. And folks, you drink carbonic acid all the time, anytime you drink a carbonated beverage. So this is a weak acid, which tells us that its conjugate base is a weak base. So bicarbonate anion is a weak base. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is that because this is a soluble strong electrolyte, if I have a 0 0.0250 concentration of the sodium bicarbonate. I have a 0 0.0250 uh, concentration of the sodium cation, and I have a 0 0.0250 concentration of the bicarbonate anion. So now that we've determined that this is going to produce this salt will produce a basic solution, we can go ahead and we can write our equal our key reaction that's going to produce uh, the ice table that's going to allow us to calculate the pH of this solution. So we take the bicarbonate anion. Now, in this case, the bicarbonate anion is acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base. It's accepting a proton. Well, the proton has to come from somewhere. And where does it come from? The water that it's in. And it's going to set up an equilibrium. It'll take a proton from water, create the weak conjugate acid, H2CO3, carbonic acid, and every time it takes a proton off of the water, it leaves behind hydroxide ion. And it's the increase in the concentration of hydroxide ion that will make the solution basic. So now we're going to go ahead, construct our ice table with the, the given information, I, C, E, initial change and equilibrium concentration. We know that our bicarbonate ion has a concentration of 0.0250 molar. We don't care about the concentration of water because it doesn't change. Initially, we don't have any hydroxide or carbonic acid. So since we have no products, our change will be minus X for our reactant plus X for both of our two products. We add the initial line to the change line, and that gives us point. 0, 0.0250 0 minus x, and then 0 plus x is just x and x. So there's our ice table. We now need to assemble our equilibrium constant expression. You have to remember, though, this is a weak base. So since it's a weak base, we don't want a Ka expression. We want a Kb expression, the Kb for the weak base base, which we'll get to in just a minute. So the KB expression is going to be our two products, H2CO3 times our hydroxide ion concentration divided by 
of our bicarbonate ion concentration, HCO3 minus. Okay, so there is our KB expression. But what we're missing is we don't have a KB. We do have a pKa for the weak acid, carbonic acid. Now, I want you to remember something. That Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. And we're doing this reaction at 25 degrees, so we know what Kw is. Well, if I take the negative log of both sides of the equation to get the p-values, I wind up with pKa, and using my log rules, plus pKb is equal to pKw. Now, I know what pKw is at 25 degrees Celsius. It's the negative log of the Kw, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, which is just 14. I don't know the pKb, but I do know, given in my problem, that the pKa is 6.347. So that's going to be 6.347 plus the pKa equals 14. So if I take, uh, in order to get my pKb, I simply have to take 14 and subtract the pKa, which is 6.347. And that gives me my pKb which is my pKb is 7.653, 7.653. Now I've got the pKb, but I want the Kb, and I can get the Kb by taking the negative antilog of the pKb, which is just going to be 10 to the minus 7.653. And when I do that, I get a Kb that's equal to 2. 2, 2 times 10 to the minus 8. So now I've got my Kb. I've got my initial concentration of 0 0.0250. I've got my concentration at equilibrium of both bicarbonate, I'm sorry, carbonic acid and hydroxide ion. That's just going to be X. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at the value of the Kb. It's 10 to the minus 8. And I want to look at the value of the initial concentration of the bicarbonate, which is 0 0.0250, or 10 to the minus 2. So that tells me, since the Kb is more than a 1,000 times smaller than the initial concentration of my reactant bicarbonate, that this X is going to be small enough that I can ignore it in my calculation and if that's ignore, ignore it in my calcul that that's an N, ignore it in my calculation, so that I don't have to deal with a quadratic equation. All right, so I think we're ready to do our calculation. We'll go ahead, set up our equilibrium constant expression with our KB, which is 2.22 2 times 10 to the minus 8. That's going to equal from the ice table x times x, which is just x squared divided by 0 0.0250 molar. I'm going to go ahead and get the 0 0.0250 molar out of the denominator by multiplying by, by both sides, which is going to give me x squared is equal to 2.22 times 10 to the minus 8. Let me go ahead and put that in parentheses so I can be a little bit clearer with that, times 0 0.0250. Now I could go ahead and calculate that, but ultimately I'm going to have to take the square root to get rid of the x squared term. And once I take the square root, I wind up with x is equal and I want you to understand that the x, what we're calculating, is the hydroxide ion concentration, not the hydronium ion concentration. x winds up equaling 2.36 times 10 to the minus 5 molar in OH minus, hydroxide ion. I can get the pOH 
by taking the negative log of that, negative log of 2.36 times 10 to the minus 5, and I get a POH that is equal to 4.628. Now, a lot of people are so excited to see an answer that is uh, one of the answers in a multiple choice question that equals the value that they got. But what you want to remember is that you're calculating the pH of a base, and a base would not have a pH of less than 7. So you understand that this is the pOH, but we can get the pH by taking... Uh, by simply subtracting the pH, the pOH from the pKW. And as long as we're at 25 degrees Celsius, the pKW is 14 minus 4.628. And when we do that, we get 9.372. 9.372. And that's the pH of our solution. We have one more task to do. And that's to calculate the percent ionization to just check and make sure that our assumption that x was small was valid. And the way we do that is we just divide the, uh, the x value we determined, which was 2.36 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, by 0 0.0250 multiply it times 100 to get it into percent. And when we do that, we get approximately 0.09%, which is plenty below our 5% rule. And so we've got our pH. We calculated our percent ionization to check and make sure that our assumption that that X was small enough to ignore. And we're done.